Hi everyone. This is Damian Abernathy. Welcome to Forgotten History of Pacific Asia War Podcast. We focus on short but sweet untold wartime stories in Pacific Asia War and update every Monday and Friday. This is our very first episode and we're going to talk about biological warfare, what Bill Gates warned us, and the untold history of it. During the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland on January 19, 2017, Bill Gates said, When you are thinking about things which could cause in excess of 10 million deaths, even something tragic like a nuclear weapon incident wouldn't get to that level. So the greatest risk is from a natural epidemic, or an intentionally caused infection bioterrorism event. Whether the next epidemic is unleashed by a quirk of nature or the hand of terrorists, scientists say a fast-moving airborne pathogen could kill more than 30 million people in less than a year. So the world does need to think about this. Nuclear warfare had been perceived by the public to be the deadliest weapon. However, it might not be true, given the fact that nuclear weapons are now regulated and cannot be deployed unless approved. The last time the world saw a nuclear bomb, 129,000 to 226,000 died, and many suffered from the aftermath. But what if there is a deadlier and cheaper weapon? Biological warfare, also known as germ warfare, is the use of biological toxins or infectious agents such as bacteria, viruses, insects, and fungi, with the intent to kill or incapacitate humans, animals, or plants as an act of war. It was heavily used by Unit 731 of the Imperial Japanese Army, during World War II on the Soviet Union and China. As many as 400,000 Chinese died of bubonic plague, cholera, anthrax, and other diseases planted by Unit 731. An attack called Operation Cherry Blossoms, which would they affected 80,000 in Southern California, was also planned by Ishishiro, the leader of Unit 731. After World War II, a report on biological warfare, activities and capabilities of foreign nations published on March 30, 1946, stated, Biological warfare is a potential military threat to all nations of the world. Most countries, regardless of size, can develop biological warfare for small-scale sabotage operations. The larger nations, possessing the necessary scientists and manufacturing facilities, should be capable of waging large-scale biological warfare in 10 years. The report continued, Biological warfare is a demoralizing, silent, and insidious weapon which can be used in a sneak attack far more destructive than the strike at Pearl Harbor. The low cost of developing a biological weapons program also makes it an attractive option. Biological warfare research differs from atomic energy development not only in its small comparative costs, but also because it is not dependent upon strategic raw materials. Any country, large or small, which has laboratory facilities and trained personnel, already possess the fundamental requirements for maintaining a biological warfare research and development program. Although its large-scale production potential might be insignificant. Zhejiang, a province in China, experienced a biological weapons attack, as an act of revenge after the Doolittle air raid in Tokyo. This was confirmed by the Khabarovsk war crime trial, as Major General Kawashima Kiyoshi, who worked at Unit 731, stated, My unit could produce 300 kilos of plague bacteria, 1,000 kilos of cholera bacteria, 800 to 900 kilos of typhoid, 500 to 700 kilos of anthrax in a month. In 1942, General Ishii led 150 soldiers to disseminate plague, cholera, typhoid, and anthrax in the Zhejiang Jiangxi War. In another meeting of 1942, Ishii Shiro stated, the bacteria weapons used in Zhejiang Jiangxi War Zone were very effective, causing several fierce epidemics. The biological attack on the village had a lasting impact for generations. One third of the population died from bubonic plague. Others were infected by glanders and anthrax spores that survived for years. Here is a victim's testimony, Hua Qingyun, 1922-2002 Jinhua City. One day in September 1942, my father and I were cutting firewood in the mountain when an itching blister appeared on my leg. Thinking it was caused by the scratch of branches, I didn't care about it. My leg suddenly turned red and swollen in the evening. Then it began to ulcerate, and the fester flesh kept falling one piece after another. My father's leg was also ulcerated. At that time, over 20 villagers were infected by ulcerative skin lesions on legs. My father died of it five years later. My family was too poor to have money to cure it. My mother picked herbs to treat my legs, but they didn't work. When I was 17, the ulceration was so serious that I was unable to work. My mother had to support the family alone. Over a decade ago, 
My mother passed away, and nobody took care of my life. I have to spend the rest of my life with the minimum allowance of 2 yuan per day given by the government and alms given by my neighbors. Several days ago, the lower part of my leg disjointed due to ulceration. Now I cannot stand up. I just sit here and wait for the end of my life. Before the Japanese soldiers conducted their biological warfare onto this village, no one experienced the ulcers on their legs. However, many started experience symptoms for years to come. Wang Xuan had been fighting for justice for the victims for over two decades. You could read more about the story in our upcoming book, Seeking Justice for Biological Warfare Victims of Unit 731, Evidence Collected by Wang Xuan. Alright guys, thanks for joining us in our first episode of Forgotten History in the Pacific Asia. We will update our